Well, today I'm going to tell you all about this old, antique, unknown, solid oak rocking chair. I call it unknown because there is absolutely no, no tag on it, no number, no nothing. And I can't seem to find out any information about this old chair. I believe this chair is well over 90 years old, but can't be too dogmatic about that. My mother was born in 1931. She passed away a few years ago from old age and Alzheimer's, unfortunately. So the story goes, as she told me many years ago, her parents found this old chair in an old miner's cabin that they had moved into. And this would have been 1932, 1933, possibly 34. And that would have been in the Forest Creek area, which is about 15 miles or so west from where I'm at right now. So it was originally my real grandfather's chair. Unfortunately, he abandoned the entire family when mom was about three years old, so she never really knew him. But my grandmother had uh, told the story of how my real grandfather would sit in this chair and strike matches on it, the old, the old wooden matches that you strike anywhere and she said it would just smell so powerfully of sulfur because he would just sit in this chair striking matches. We're going to take a really good close look at this chair in just a little bit and I'll show you something that I discovered on this chair about 15 or so years ago. So my grandmother remarried after my true grandfather had abandoned the family and she married a guy named Shell and he's been the only grandfather that I've known on my mother's side, even though he was a step-grandfather. Got lots of pictures of Shell sitting in this chair. It just has always been known as Shell's old rocker, but originally it was my true grandfather's old rocker for a short time. So I know that this chair existed in 1932, but I believe it is older than that. I think it was built sometime in the 1920s. But again, can't say for sure. So after my step-grandfather passed away in 74 or 75, we ended up with this old chair and mom gave it to me. And when I moved out, I took it with me and I've had it ever since. I sit in this old chair a lot, every day. Sit right there at the computer and edit my videos and do all kinds of stuff. Got a pillow sitting there because it is kind of hard. Without the pillow, well, the chair's a little bit hard to sit in. So I'm going to go ahead and take this into another room, and we're going to have a good close look at this old chair. So I did find another chair that looks very, very similar to this on about five years ago on this web page here. I just kind of accidentally ran across it when I was searching out this old chair. I used to think that it was a one-of-a-kind custom-built chair, but it's obviously not. The other chair that you see in the pictures has a different back on it, of course, but it is basically the same chair. So they were manufactured, not just a one-of-a-kind thing, but I can find no information about this chair and, or when it could have been built or, or how much it's worth or anything. But let's take a good close look at this wonderful old solid oak rocking chair. Now, I love this old chair. I love the way it looks. I love the finish on it. I just think it looks so cool. And it is solid oak. It's just a really cool, very comfortable to me, old rocking chair. Whether this old chair was ever refinished, restained, uh, certainly it never happened in my lifetime. I don't know if it happened in the years before I was around. But I don't think so. I think it looks very, very original. But it definitely does have some problems, and we'll take a good close look at that. Let's have a good close look at the seat here. It is very, very comfortable the way that it's shaped. You know, I have absolutely no idea how they shape wood like that. It must be very difficult to bend a piece of wood like that. Or maybe it was cut like that. I don't know, but it has just a really nice curve to it, and it's very comfortable. And it's also very thick, and when we turn this thing over upside down, you'll get a look at that. The seat is very smooth, like it's been 
sanded with really fine sandpaper and I think that's just years and years and years and years of people sliding in and out of this thing. The back portions of this chair also have a nice curve to them and are in good shape. However, the worst part of this chair, in my opinion, is this area right here on the back. It is missing a big chunk of wood and as soon as you turn this thing over, this thing will just fall out, this little back piece. But you can just set it right back in there. And fortunately, Mom kept the piece that goes on there. I think Mom always had this, or maybe Grandma had given it to her when, when the chair came to us. I don't remember. I think we had this piece of wood much longer than that. Now somebody attempted to glue this piece back on and I don't know if the camera can really see it but you can see this section here that's got glue on it. Whether it was uh, done, it would have been done by my grandparents. You can see a little bit of evidence of glue in there but it looks like somebody had just put a dab of glue there and then just tried to stick it back on there. And as you can see, it fits pretty darn well right there. It actually will fit on there, but it's not a super good fit. And the edges are kind of sticking out. But I'm sure an expert could reattach that piece very easily. So that will always go with the chair. So that statement that I just made right there kind of made it sound like this chair is up for sale. It is not up for sale. I plan to keep this for the rest of my life or until I'm very old and no longer able to really sit in it for whatever reason. But I have absolutely nobody to leave this chair to. So I don't know what's going to happen to it when I get sick and die. I don't want it just to be turned over to the city or the state. I am hoping to find somebody to leave this beautiful old chair to. But for the time being, I'm keeping it because I want to sit in it. So now let's briefly talk about these things right here. This chair has four on each side, eight all together. They're just very beautiful, I think. Uh, they, they would have been made on a lathe, I'm very sure. And if this chair was made before 1930, you know, did they have electricity back then? Electric lathes or not? Did they... How did they make those lathes work? And they're all intact and they're all very strong and they're all there. No damage to those whatsoever. So now let's talk about these armrests. They are in probably the most perfect condition as far as the wood goes. They look the best is what I should say. They This is a claw handles. These are what I would call claw handles. They're very comfortable. They're both in good shape. There's a pretty good scratch on this one. And if you remember me, my talking about how Grandma said that her, that my mom's dad would spend hours and hours striking matches on this chair, I was told these areas here is where the matches were striked on both sides. And I believe that's what Grandma was talking about when she said that uh, my re real grandfather had just struck matches on this. And in fact, she said that's how these big scratches got here. So the way the sun is coming through the eastern window this morning, you can really see how beautiful this chair is. It's, it's in beautiful shape. I don't think it's ever been refinished, as I said before. I'm sure it has not. It's just beautiful the way it is. And my grandparents, of course, used nothing but wood heat. So this chair has always been around old, leaky wood stoves. And my grandfather and my step-grandfather and my father smoked in the house. So it's got lots of cigarette smoke on it. But it doesn't smell like it. It doesn't smell like stale old cigarette smoke. It smells very good. Now let's talk about the second problem that this old oak rocker has. The first one being the missing piece of wood on the back. And the next problem is that these armrests tend to want to come loose. So you should be able to see that. I can pull that up. Never has the thing completely come off. 
the armrests obviously have been drilled out part way and then this big stud part here goes up in there and unfortunately both of these are just a little bit loose but there's no way to really get in there there's no screw in there it's just sitting on there but it's not really a problem i've got the leather bootstraps tied on there in some of the old pictures you'll see uh shell sitting in this chair and they've grandma and shell well probably grandma because shell wouldn't do anything like that would tie kind of tie that thing down because i'm sure that same problem was going on long before i was born so all i've done is take the longest leather bootstraps i could find and tie them from one end or underneath and then come back up and tie them just to kind of keep it down and it works really good and that leather is very soft and should not damage that solid oak whatsoever and now finally we're looking at the third problem with this chair and it looks really serious but it's really not a big problem i don't think we're looking at the back of the chair now and we see the wire and the turnbuckle that wire is electrical wire with big thick insulation on it and i've got it wrapped around there to kind of hold the the legs together you see the, the the wooden dowel in between there's a little bit of looseness there i could actually pull pull those apart and let's flip this over and i'll show you exactly what i mean so we got this chair sitting kind of forward now, not completely upside down. And let's zoom in a little bit. And there we go. You can see the back of the rockers. So the problem is we got this wooden dowel here, but it's loose. It, it's not really tight. So I could easily take and pu push these apart. And my fear was that when I sat down in this thing, that these rockers were going this way. And I did not want that to happen because the whole chair could easily collapse. But I got a camera and I stuck it down there and I sat down in it and it was not moving at all. And the fact that the chair is sitting on carpet is a huge plus. So this thing's not super tight, but it's tight enough just to kind of keep it all solid and together. And I think it's working really good, and I don't think it's really necessary, honestly. Now we got this thing flipped completely upside down, and you can see there's a support here, support there, there's one there, and of course there's one here. And this stuff is all pretty tight, pretty darn tight, and you should be able to see the thickness of this solid oak. And this thing is nice and solid, there's no bowing or anything like that. It seems kind of amazing that it's able to support me. I am about 250 pounds. And the, the seat of this chair is in just excellent condition. So now we're going to go back to my grandfather's striking matches on this chair. I wouldn't figure this out till probably about 15 years ago when I flipped this thing upside down for the very first time. And then I discovered... All these markings over here all these scratchings over here and I thought what in the world is that let's take a closer look at that well that looks surprisingly like somebody is sitting in this chair and using this area to strike a wooden match well I stuck my face down there and gave it a good sniff and sure enough I could smell sulfur embedded in that wood so apparently that is what my real grandfather was, and I maybe not, maybe it was Shell, or maybe it was somebody else before that, was striking matches down there, striking the wooden matches. It actually works really good. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you have any good information about this old chair or just something you want to share, please feel free to comment down below. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching.